Although in a number of countries gender has been recognised as an important issue for some time, in others that recognition is a recent phenomenon. The development of gender statistics follows recognition of gender as an important issue for social and economic development. Each individual statistical system must adapt how it develops gender statistics to its particular situation. No two offices and no two political systems are exactly alike, and what works for one may not work for another. For example, a decentralized system may make it harder to coordinate and construct alliances, but it may be easier to understand and meet customer needs. The following issues are to be considered and will be covered in this presentation. Developing alliances, top management support, funding, and legal, program, and organization issues. Each country needs to have a clear understanding of what gender statistics means for them. Gender statistics is a field that cuts across all areas of statistics. It is about identifying, producing, disseminating and analysing statistics to understand how gender issues affect individuals and society. It is a way to show how gender differences can affect the economic and social development of societies. However a country defines gender statistics, these statistics will cut across all statistical domains. In order to develop a new program of gender statistics, or to improve an existing one, alliances should be built both inside and outside the national statistical system. Firstly, looking at the situation within a statistical office. There are natural constituencies in both centralised and decentralised offices that will often resist a gender statistics programme. They may see gender statistics as being unnecessary or already adequately covered. Ensuring long-term viability of a gender programme requires an understanding of the problems and needs of other domains – education, health, the economy, etc. The statistical expertise in each of the traditional domain areas will be required in the collection, processing and dissemination of gender-sensitive data. The advocates of gender statistics need to convince those working in different domains to cooperate with them and with each other. A powerful argument is that producing integrated gender statistics products provides a richer analysis of existing data and also improves the data collection processes, editing, and imputation and analysis in each of the domain areas. This enhances the work prestige of each domain. Gender sensitization training of statisticians working on the different domains is essential to building successful alliances. All the domain areas must also receive internal and external credit for the gender statistics products resulting from the integration of their domains. Outside a statistical office, alliances need to be built with subject matter experts in ministries, parliament and non-governmental offices, as well as international agencies and the private sector who are or can be seen as advocates of gender. A list of those who do or could share the goals of a gender statistics program should be developed in order to facilitate regular communication and alliance building. It is important that the statisticians listen carefully to the requirements of the external allies. Alliance building must be based on mutual understanding and respect if it is to be more than an understanding of convenience. This means that statisticians and external partners need to listen to each other's needs and develop a common appreciation of the relevant issues. While it is not possible or necessary to meet all these expectations of the external partners, it is important that there are as few misunderstandings as possible as to the commitments of each side. It is important that the promises that are made by statisticians are able to be delivered. Gender mainstreaming will not happen effectively if there is not firm commitment from top management within a national statistical office. This commitment requires a good basic understanding of gender issues, as well as an understanding of the role that gender statistics plays in ensuring policy making that promotes gender equality. 
There is a need for briefings and other information sessions for top decision makers alongside the more technical and detailed training which needs to be provided to those who actually produce and use the data. High-level management determines the overall direction of the National Statistical Office and the agencies within it. The decision to introduce a new instrument, such as a time-use or gender-based violence survey, requires top management's approval. This level of management does not, however, make all the decisions that are needed to improve gender statistics in the NSS. The decision on changes to a questionnaire or administrative form, for example, does not generally require top management's approval. Most of the discussions and planning will be done by middle-level management and those who work with them. Advocating a gender statistics program competes with existing programs such as national accounts, household surveys and business surveys. It also competes with any potential new programs. One of the surest signs of commitment to building a gender statistics program is the allocation of resources. There are several potential funding sources. National government, international and non-governmental, and market-based. The statistical office should determine if it has the necessary access to leaders who control funding sources. If it doesn't, then an external champion must be found. For example, the head of Gender National Machinery, an influential member of the Prime Minister's office, or the head of a prominent non-governmental organisation. Governmental funding is usually the best source, as it has a greater chance of becoming a regular source of ongoing funding. To obtain new funding will require convincing the Parliament or the relevant ministries of the necessity of this funding. One mechanism to accomplish this step is advocacy by a statistical council or board. International and non-governmental organisations could also influence the government to allocate funding for this purpose. Another possible source of funding is international and non-governmental organisations themselves. It can be helpful in the initial development of a program and can be used to develop new analytical and dissemination systems. The UNECE UNDP reports of 2004 on the status of official statistics related to gender equality revealed that more than half the countries in Eastern Europe and the CIS had used external funding assistance for work in respect of gender statistics. Most of this funding came from bilateral and multilateral donors such as the World Bank. While this is encouraging, it must be remembered that this type of funding is often not stable or long-term. The Statistical Office, however, should be able to maintain the new system from its own resources. Moreover, international and non-governmental organisations have objectives that may not be congruent with those of the Statistical Office. A possible source of funding that has been used in some countries is the revenue from the marketing and sale of statistical products. In reality, few if any agencies have been able to fund their programs based solely on sales revenue. One reason is the high cost of producing official statistics. It is difficult to provide for sufficient revenue from the sale of publications to support the infrastructure needed to collect, process and disseminate statistical products. Some countries have shown their commitment to engendering their national statistical system by including the need for this within the legal framework. For example, South Africa refers to the need to produce gender-sensitive data in their statistical law. Sweden and Ukraine promote gender statistics in their gender equality law. Other countries refer to the need for gender statistics in their national statistical plans. The level of detail covered in these provisions differs across countries. Specific laws can also be developed for gender statistics. An example is a draft law, which is to be considered in 2007 by the Italian Parliament. This draft law aims to make gender disparities visible and to ensure equal readability of data relative to both sexes. It contains detailed requirements for gender statistics in different areas. It includes the need for all official statistics to be sex disaggregated. It details some sources which need to produce sex disaggregated data, such as population censuses, business registers, 
agriculture, industry, and services censuses. It also outlines the frequency and the domains where sex disaggregated data are needed, including areas where gender sensitive data are more relevant, such as violence, unpaid work, and health status and behaviour. The law also specifies the establishment of a consultative committee for gender statistics. The Statistical Act of South Africa, Act 6 of 1999, includes a number of statistical principles, one of which is that official statistics must protect the confidentiality of the identity of and the information provided by respondents and be sensitive to distribution by gender, disability, region and similar socio-economic features. It is important to be clear as to the nature and extent of the Gender Statistics Program. Developing a Gender Statistics Program should include bringing together data from different existing sources to develop a gender portrait of a country, expanding the use of existing sources to include the collection of gender-relevant information, development of new data collections encompassing gender-sensitive areas, improvement of existing methodology and definitions to make them more gender-sensitive, maintaining contact with users of gender statistics to ensure users' needs are met, and development of a marketing plan. There are different ways to integrate gender statistics into the national statistical system. Gender focal points in the National Statistical Office are mostly located in the social and demographic area. However, according to an assessment carried out by ECE and UNDP in 2004 in CIS and SEE countries, less than a third of the gender focal points interact on a regular basis with other statistical departments outside the social and demographic areas. This points to the problem that the Gender Statistics Program could be limited to cover only social and demographic statistics. A small number of countries have established Gender Statistics Units, but these again tend to be located in the social and demographic area, with little influence in other areas such as economic statistics. There is no perfect organisational formula for where and how to implement a Gender Statistics Program. Whatever model is chosen, care must be given to ensure that all areas of statistics are covered. The ultimate objective is to ensure that gender has proper attention in all areas and no gender organisation is required. No country has yet reached this point. Some lessons can be drawn from current and past experiences in organising gender statistics programmes. Most countries have a gender focal point. Appointing gender focal points or gender statistics units can be a good way to start a new gender statistics program in countries with no other gender focus exists in the national statistical system. But as the system becomes more gender sensitive, the role of the gender focal point can change from initiator of activities to overseeing work. Gender focal points or staff of gender statistics units should be technical rather than administrative. It is unrealistic to expect a single person or a small unit to have the necessary knowledge and skills about gender issues. Therefore, organisational support and cooperation is required from the whole National Statistical Office. In order for the gender focal point to be effective in all areas of statistics, he or she needs to report to a senior manager of the organisation. The terms of reference of the gender focal point or unit needs to be clearly understood and promulgated throughout the whole organisation. A viable gender statistics program will integrate data and provide information across domains. Another way of organising a gender statistics program is to establish a specific gender committee inside the statistical office or the statistical system. The advantage of committees is that all areas of statistics can be covered and statisticians in all areas of statistics have full ownership of the program. The disadvantage is that there is a danger that no responsibility will be taken. This can be overcome with clear terms of reference endorsed by top management. Regular reporting to top management of success and issues of gender statistics programs is an essential requirement for success. 
In a decentralized system, there may be different statistical agencies located in different ministries devoted to the different domains. In this case, the development of a gender statistics program could be more complex. If a coordinating body exists for the decentralized system, that office can organize and operate an interministerial group to run a gender statistics program. In any issue, the hardest task is to start. The story of evolvement of gender statistics in Sweden is an example of a success story. In 1980, Sweden established an Equal Opportunity Act and created a Minister for Equal Opportunity Affairs. Out of this, a unit was created in Statistics Sweden to monitor and compile statistics illustrating gender equality in Sweden. Some statistics were easily found, but many issues could not be addressed because of the lack of statistics. Sweden established a fact book on gender statistics. It was launched in 1984. It has been a major success and the starting point for many countries who wanted to set up similar gender equality projects. The Swedish external agency CEDA supported many fact books projects in developing countries. In 1996, the book Engendering Statistics, A Tool for Change was published. It has been sold in over 65 countries.